In this lesson, we'll look at threads and async, short for asynchronous, tasks. You'll learn how to use the async task class and methods to run tasks in the background, such as for accessing files on the internet without interfering with your main user interface thread. We'll use a sample app shown here that I've called Background Task. It's included in the Working Files Samples workspace. I suggest you watch this lesson first, then open the app yourself, then run it in the emulator as I'm showing here. The sample app runs a task in the background using the Android Async Task class, which was created to make handling background threads easier. So let's see how it works. If we click the Start Task button, we'll see a few things happening. First, we see a message that the main thread is running. Second, we see the background task operating, showing the progress bar. And finally, that the background task is completed. A number of things happen pretty quickly, so let's take a look at a couple of graphics to review what took place. Then we'll come back to look at the app code in detail. First, recall this graphic we looked at in an earlier lesson about app threads. When an app starts, it's fired up in a Linux process in the main or user interface thread. The UI thread is responsible for maintaining an open interface with the user, and it should not be blocked with actions that take a while to complete, such as accessing data on the internet. So background or worker threads should be used for these kinds of activities. This graphic shows what takes place in the sample app. We're using the Android async task class to initiate and manage a background thread in parallel with our main thread. Let's go through the steps of what happens, and then we'll return to the code so you can see in detail how it's all done. First, in our main thread, the onCreate method is used to set up the basic user interface display. In onCreate, we also set up an onClick listener for our Start Task button. When the button is clicked and the onClick listener is activated, it executes the background thread and displays the message that the main thread is running. In the background thread that's set up by async task, a sequence of methods is executed. First, the onPreExecute method is invoked, and we initiate the progress dialog bar. Next, in the do and background method, we do our background work. In this example, the app is simply looping through a sequence of thread sleep methods, where in a real app, you'd be accessing the internet or doing some other type of heavy duty work. While doing that work, the method uses the publish progress method to send a notification to the on progress update method in the main thread, where this method updates the progress bar in the dialog. Note that the background task operating and main thread running notices are showing asynchronously, that is, at the same time, just what we want. And now let's go back to the do in background method. When it finishes, the onPostExecute method is invoked, and it displays the background task completed message. So that's a lot of stuff happening in parallel in a quick sequence. But let's take a closer look at it in the actual code. In Eclipse, then, let's start with a quick look at the app resources. We've defined some strings you'll see referenced in the Java code and dimensions for text sizes. In the main XML file, we have defined a linear layout with fields for the header name, background task, and our start task button. Now on to the Java code. Following our package name here, we have import statements. And notice we've included one for async task and progress dialog. We've called our main activity async task main. And the first thing we do is declare a couple of variables we'll be using. One for the progress dialog, and another is a variable for the incrementing we'll be doing of the progress dialog. Next, we declare the onCreate method and the standard set content view to display our main layout here. Next is the button and onClick listener declarations for our start task button. I've gone over these statements quickly because we've covered them in previous lessons. Now let's look inside our onClick listener callback code. This is the code that's executed when the button is clicked. 
First, we get the context of the application and assign it to the variable context. Next, we create a progress dialog object that will be used to generate the progress bar in the display. We create a background task object using the background task class we'll define below. Next, we execute the background task followed by toasting the message that the main thread is running. Let me run the app again so that you can see that happening. And you see the main thread running message down below. Now on to looking at our background task class and methods. The first method overrides the on pre-execute method. Here we set the progress bar in the display. We set it as cancelable, set the message content, set the style as horizontal, set the initial progress at zero, the maximum progress at 100, and finally cause it to show in the display. I'll run the app again to show you. We set up the initial values of this display here. Next is the do in background method that does the real background work. In this example, we're just doing a series of sleep methods on the thread. In the real app, you'd be doing things like retrieving data from the internet. Now, during this execution, we do a couple of other things. One is publishing progress using our progress increment. This method triggers a call to the on progress update method below that we'll look at in a minute. In the do and background method, we also check to see if the task has been canceled. And if it has, we break out of our work loop. And we're not doing a cancel on our little demo app, but if you wanted to use one, you'd use the cancel method. Finally, we return the string defined by background task completed in the strings XML file. The next method is the on progress update method that's invoked when the publish progress method is executed. Now this method is separate from the publish progress method and run in the main thread so that you can interface with the main display if you want to. In this method, what we're doing is incrementing the progress bar by the value of our variable progress increment. In the last method on post execute, we're dismissing the progress bar and toasting the message that was returned as a result from the do and background method. So let me run the app one last time and you can see the progress bar moving and it'll finally be dismissed. There it goes. And the completion message showing. So in this lesson, we've covered the basics of threads and background tasks. We'll look at more about threads in coming lessons. But there's also a good section on the developer's website shown here about processes and threads that you can consult for more information. It has a lot of good information and it has a link to the async task page, which has additional information about the async task 